Hi, this is Mrs. Often. I'm broadcasting today once again from my kitchen and my scenic Christmas card display. Talking today about arithmetic sequences and series. We've already talked about general sequences and series, ordered lists that generally have some sort of mathematical rule associated with them. An arithmetic sequence, and it is arithmetic and not arithmetic, so an arithmetic sequence increases or decreases by the same amount as we go from term to term. That means um, if we were to define it recursively, we would have in order to get the next term, add this number to your prior term. Or in order to get the next term, subtract this number from your prior term. This increase or decrease is called the common difference. And the formula, which hopefully we'll derive in class for the arithmetic sequence, is a sub n, to get any term, equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Remember to use the order of operations and to always subtract n minus 1, then multiply by d. Um, so, here, a sub 1 represents the first term, n is the number of the term that you are on, and d is that common difference. In today's work, we'll be looking at writing expressions for arithmetic sequences and using the formula to find the sum of a finite arithmetic series. So let's get started. Okay, writing expressions in finding terms is an important skill with arithmetic sequences. Let's say that we have an arithmetic sequence that has a first term of 3 and a common difference of 2. Part A of this question says write the expression. Well, fortunately, it's pretty easy to do this. I'm just going to write a sub n equals, my first term is 3, so a sub 1 is 3, a common difference of 2 means that I'm going to write plus n minus 1 times that common difference of 2. Now, what I could do here is change this around a little bit and apply the distributive property. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. 2 times n is 2n. So another way of writing this that you will often see is a sub n equals 2 times n is 2n. Two, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Add that to 3, and you get plus 1. Okay. This will still give us our first term of 3, and because 2 is acting like a slope, it's going to have a common difference of 2. If I want to find the 15th term, well, I could start with 3 and just add 2 every time, but why do that? I have this other formula. So a sub 15 is going to be equal to 2 times 15 plus 1 or 31. If you're unsure, you can always go back and make that whole table and check. It's uh, not a good idea to do this, though, if you are on the 50th term or the 100th term. That might just take a little bit too long. So practice with some smaller numbers and feel confident about your answer. So in that problem, we were given information about the common difference and about the first term. A lot of times, we're not. We're just given one or two or three terms somewhere in that arithmetic sequence. So let's talk about finding an expression where we're given just any two terms. So find the formula for an arithmetic sequence in which a sub 2 is 5 and a sub 7 is negative 15. So I've written seven little lines here. My first term, I don't know. My second term is 5. My third, fourth, fifth, and sixth term, I don't know. But my seventh term is 15. Now, it looks like one, one, two, three, four, five steps. So I added the same common difference five times. So I could write a little algebra equation to solve this. 
negative 15, my seventh term, is equal to 5, my second term, plus 5 times my common difference. Because if I've added something 5 times, that's the same as saying it's that thing multiplied by 5 and just added once. So I'll go ahead and solve this equation. Subtracting 5 from both sides gives me negative 20. And dividing by 5 gives me d equal to negative 4. So I don't know a1 right now, but I do know that my common difference is negative 4. Now, if I know my common difference is negative 4, I can say, well, this was negative 11, right? This was negative 7. This was negative 3. This was 1, 5. And backing up further, I can say my first term, a sub 1, is 9. You don't have to fill all these in. You can find your answer doing more algebra, the same method I did here. But I, I like filling in tables. What can I say? I'm going to write my formula given the same model I had on my first slide. a sub n, any term, is a sub 1, 9, plus n minus 1 times negative 4. Okay, once again, I could choose to rewrite this. I'll do that right over here. I could rewrite it as negative 4n plus 5. I did that wrong. Negative 4n plus 13 was really what I wanted to write. Okay, negative 4n plus 13. Always a good idea to just check your answer and be sure that it works. Okay, so there we are with finding an expression given any two terms in your sequence. Now, oftentimes, we will ask, be asked to add the terms of a given arithmetic sequence. This addition answer is called a partial sum of an arithmetic series. Now, for all our arithmetic series, we can only have partial sums because as we keep adding and subtracting numbers with that common difference, we'll get numbers that are either larger and larger, closer to positive infinity, or more and more negative, closer to negative infinity. So eventually, if we did an infinite sum, if we tried to add all the numbers in an infinite number of terms together, we would definitely get infinity. And, well, that's just too easy to do. Why would we talk about that? So here's the formula for the partial sum of an arithmetic series. Here the big letter S is indicating sum. I could have used the summation symbol, but we tend not to. So this is S for sum. N divided by 2 times the quantity A sub 1 plus A sub N. We'll talk more about why this formula works in class, but right now I just want to show it to you and do a couple example problems. In this formula, n equals the number of terms, a sub 1 is our first term, and a sub 1 is the last term that we are considering. So we're going to use this formula in two problems. And one of them is a word problem. I'm so excited. Okay. Here's our example, partial sum of an arithmetic series. Find the sum of the first 20 terms of 1, 6, 11, oh, we're just going to go on and on. Sometimes they give you the first and last, sometimes they don't. This time, we didn't get that. But I do know what A1 is. A1 is 1. Okay, A sub n. So looks like it's going up by 5 each time. So I can write my formula, a sub n, as 1 plus n minus 1 times 5. That's great because it will allow me to figure out what a sub 20 is. So I'm just going to figure that out. 1 plus 19 times 5. And 19 times 5 is 95, so this is going to be 96. 
So I will have n is 20, the first 20 terms. So I have 20 divided by 2 times 1 plus 96. So 1 plus 96 is 97. 20 divided by 2 is 10. So I have 10 times 97, and that is 970. Now hopefully at least a few of you will have watched this video before we talk about these series, and you'll remind me to tell this exciting story of young Gauss and how he annoyed his teacher by coming up with this method for finding partial sums. Okay, so our short story here, you've got to know A1, you've got to know your final term, you've got to know the number of terms, and then you can just use this formula, and it's easy. Let's look at something that has an application. Here we have a problem about a raffle. In a raffle, 10 prizes are given. First prize is $1,000, second is $950, third is $900, and so on. What is the total amount of prize money awarded? Well, we know there are 10 prizes. I know that the first prize is $1,000. Now, I don't know what the 10th place prize is, but I do know that I can write my formula real quick and figure that out. So 10 minus 1 times negative 50, because it's going down by 50 every time. OK, so 1,000 plus 9 times negative 50. 9 times negative 50 is negative 450. So I have 1,000 plus negative 450. And that is going to be $550 for that 10th place winner. Boy. I should try winning some of these raffles that I write about in these word problems. So my total amount of prize money awarded, n is 10, 10 divided by 2, 1,000 plus 550. So 1,000 plus 550 is 1550. 10 divided by 2 is 5, so I'll multiply that together. And overall, it will be a total of $7,750 in prizes for this raffle. And that's your application problem for the arithmetic series. Hope you've enjoyed this video about applications and problems with arithmetic sequences and series, and that you'll go on and watch my other video on geometric sequences and the series. Thanks. Have a great day.